composing gloves here and this is a combo video for music theory from the ground up and for MIDI music theories. So if you guys have never viewed the other series at all, even though you should have at some point, this is a chance to mix in the comments if you are want to do that. I mean, I don't get that many comments in my videos, so maybe no one will do that, but whatever. I don't care. I'm just here to help you. So we're going to talk about today a subject that you will need to become familiar with. It is the circle of fifths. It's a very useful thing that you kind of already know. We're just going to put some more terms together. So every time we... So there, this is the circle of fifths, okay? And it's used with keys, as you can see. We have C major, G, and then they have minor inside. We haven't talked about minor, and I'm not going to bring this image back up. But if you want to look at the minor, you can go ahead and look at it. It's pretty much the same thing once you understand how this works. So there's an, an interesting relationship with the fifth. So we talked about our intervals, and you've memorized these. Now, what about uh, what's so special about the fifths? These, these perfect intervals aren't like a mistake, like, oh, man. They didn't get there by accident. They're perfect because they have some cool properties. The fourth, fifth, and tonic all have some very interesting dealios going on. So here is a C major. So I'm going to play a C major chord. You don't need to understand the chords. We're going to look at the fifth. So here's C. What's a fifth from C? Oh, yeah, adds G. Hey, look at that. And a G adds one sharp. What's a fifth from G? Oh, yeah, adds D. And a D adds another sharp. So now there's two. Are you detecting a pattern? Fifth, fifth. Go again, fifth. Go again, fifth. Go again, fifth. Wow, that's pretty intense. It goes all the way around so we get to F and then we get back to C. Check this out. If we play a C major chord, then we play a G major chord, then we play a D major chord, then we play an A. I'm going around, I'm going around the chart here. So now I'm on E. I'm inverting them for just easiness. So B. Let me not invert them. You know what? Let's not invert them. So okay, here's C, G, D, A, E, B, uh, G flat F sharp. D flat, A, E, B, whoops, whoa, 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 I played the wrong thing. D flat, oh, my bad. S scroll back to F sharp, F sharp, D flat. I think of it as C sharp, so it's a, it's a little weird. So A flat, E flat, B flat, F, and then C. So you, you can see here that we have this cool sort of relationship. They, the relationship of five to one is pretty much agreed as the strongest resolution there is. It creates tension and release. It's the best option. So if we go from a five chord, it wants to resolve to, resolve to a one. Now there's different ways of doing this and I'm using inversions, which is outside of our scope, but we haven't even covered chords at all yet. So I don't feel bad about this at all. So, okay. We've talked about now, the, so these are fifths, and we have this cool relationship. Check this out. If we do the nearest inversions, whoops, it's a B. My bad. That's wrong. B. That's what I'm doing wrong. Uh, F sharp, C sharp, A, E, B. F, C. Now, it can keep going. You can keep going. And you get all these cool sorts of things. A few of those were wrong just because I'm just not on my game right now. I'm not being the best example. I'm sorry. Forgive me for my uh, not being the best example right now. But anyways, you get the idea. They, they share a cool sort of morphing relationship. So because these relationships are so strong, we can move from the key of C to either F or G very easily. So going that way is the circle of fifths. If we go the other way, guess what? It's the circle of fourths. So that's pretty cool. So C to F, guess what? That's a fourth. B to, B to F to B, a fourth. So they're always perfect fourths. So fifths one way, fourths the other way. When we get into cadences and things, you're gonna start realizing, hey, hey, that's the thing. But we haven't gotten even into chords yet, so we're not gonna talk about that. But I wanted to bring this up now because it's very useful. If you're gonna modulate, meaning change your key you're going to shift the tonal center from c to g so you're going to modulate to g if you do sound design modulation means like sort of another thing but in music theory modulation means when you're changing keys they'll say modulate they don't say shift or change for some reason they say modulate so that because you want to be fancy because we like using words that are fancy so we go from c to g we modulate to it and i, I believe they actually if you're going to be fancy you need to pronounce it modulation just like that so we're going to modulate 
I want that to be a thing. Modulate to C to G. And it's going to sound really pleasant. So here's a C major scale. We're going to play around in it, right? And then we could go to a G. That sounds pretty nice. And we could go back to fourth. Well, from that point, we I could do a number of things, but we're gonna go, we could go back to C quite easily. So here's C major, and then we could jump to G. We could jump back to C. We could jump to F. F is the other direction. It's a fourth, not as strong as a change, but it's still very consonant, very pleasant. And the cool thing about F is it has that B flat, which will form a C7 chord, which is a really nice sort of way to shift around and do cool things. So we're going to, so this is a thing that you might not necessarily get right now. You might, right now, you might just understand that this is fifths going that way and this is fourths and they add sharps and flats. We also run into something here called the order of sharps and flats, which I will cover. I don't think I even had that on my list. It's one of those things that I, has come up now. So I'm going to do that probably in the next video so I don't forget about it. But the order of sharps and flats is a really nifty thing. And if, if all you recognize is the fifths and fourths, that's a valuable thing. I, you should memorize this. You should already have it memorized because you've memorized the intervals. You go around all day and you're that weird guy who's like standing in line. You're like, oh, I have time. What is a... Uh, a tritone from D and you think about it you're like oh a tritone I'm gonna you're like oh that's a G sharp or what is a like tritone from C oh that's F sharp what is a tritone you go through all your tritones and you're like what is a minor sixth from this or blank blah 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 and you do that so yeah that horrible sounding it's a G sharp I, I still do it all the time, but I tend to move in certain keys and that's a bad thing. I'm trying to get away from that. So I've been doing that more and more often. Not, I don't, I'm, a, I'm a weirdo. I am that weirdo. I'm the one in orange in the line. Ordering an orange Julius at Dairy Queen saying weird crap about music theory to the guy behind me. I'm that weird guy. So anyways, this is a circle of fists. You should learn it. I don't know really what else to say about it. You're going to see the patterns later. It's one of those things that it's easier to apply than to just memorize it, but it's so beneficial to memorize it and then apply it. Oh, it's, you will learn a lot faster. So have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.